we have got a bit of strobe lighting gut you can actually see it there <laughs> so we've got a bit of a technical fault in the workshop at the moment one of the lights is on its way out and it's giving a disco effect in there so it's great hi youtube neil here with face lift interiors welcome back to our channel so in this video i'm going to show you how to build a custom bench seat to fit any space in your home as always, if you like upholstery tips and tricks, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell, so you're always notified when new videos go live. Some amazing news this week, guys. Um, we just hit 50,000 subscribers on this channel, so thank you so much for all your love and support. Uh, it means the world to us. We never thought we'd hit that, being such a niche thing as upholstery, but we have a new goal, and that is 100. Again, guys, thank you for your love and support and, and all your appreciation on this channel. Also, more exciting news, Things are really starting to get moving now on our academy. I know we've been talking about this for a long time, but we're actually starting to really get towards the end now. So make sure you follow us across all socials and we will be putting a video up very soon explaining all the aspects of the academy. Right, so let's get to this video. This is how to build a custom bench seat for anywhere in your home. And we hope you enjoy. Action. Right guys, so in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do a bench seat this can be applied to you know a little seat you've got at home, a little bench area. This is going to be different to our typical bench seat as it's got a curved front on it. So with that being said, we're not going to be able to clear the fabric out on the front. So we can't do a roll over border. There is some sewing involved in this. It depends on the shape of your bench seat. If it's square, you can probably get away with just pulling it round, tacking it off. On this one in particular, I'm going to show you how we do like a cushioned bench seat. So. Right, what I'm doing here guys is I'm using some bottoming fabric, a bit of glue and some chalk. I'm laying it nice and flat, making sure there's no ripples and I'm just running the chalk round to try and get the correct shape. I apologize for the camera angle here. It was a very tight space, um, so we couldn't really get the shot that we wanted, but I'll show you later on in the video how to do a template. As you can see, I've got my chalk. I'm running it round. My template is nice and flat. There's no ripples. And you can apply this to any place you need to take a template. Howdy partners. What we've got now is we've got a template and I'm gonna show you how I make the template because where this template was, it was really difficult to film. So I'm just gonna show you here how it's come out, how I'm gonna cut it, and then the allowances that I've made, that I'm gonna make, shall we say. When making bench seats, some things to consider are the height because obviously some people have things built they you know they'll have carpenters in when they're renovating the house and the carpenters will build things i'm not this is not a digger carpenters but you know sometimes things are built to the right height already and then by the time you add a cushion on top of that it's quite high so when, when you're doing bench seating it's important to think about your heights because when i do bench seating if i know that there's a carpenter there building the bench you know i'm advising the customer to be at like between 40 centimeters high and 42 centimeters high off the floor. By the time that the wood and the, all the padding goes on top, you've got another good seven centimeters to go on top. So bear that in mind when doing bench seats. So this one that we're doing now, it's already quite high. So I'm gonna do it on quite a thin board, I'm doing it on a six mil board, because obviously underneath is fully supported. It's all wood. So the, the wood doesn't have to be that thick. So basically what I'm doing is I'm reducing the size of the wood and the foam. So, you know, it's not as high because this bench seat is already 50 centimetres high, then I'm putting an 18 mil board and then two inches and two and a half inches of foam on top. You're looking at coming up to nearly 60 centimetres, which is really high. A dining seat height is about 50. So that's about the height I would say you want to be at. Anything over that is going to be a bit high, but if it's already built, then just try and reduce it as much as you can, like I'm doing here. As you can see, this is our template. What I'm going to do is just draw out for you guys so you can kind of understand my allowances. So here is a wall. Here is a wall, and here, can't even spell today. Here is a wall. So when I've done this template, I know that from here, from this side to this side is gonna be tight. We don't want that to be too big. We don't wanna do that at the exact size that the template comes out. Let me show you first how I do a template. So all I'm doing is putting a bit of glue on there to hold this in place. Now this is how I do a template. I'd have a bit of this black bottoming. It doesn't have to be black bottoming. You can use anything as long as you get a flat template. And then what I'm doing is I'm flattening it down so there's no crinkles. It's you don't want any lumps and bumps in it because basically it could distort 
you know what you're doing so obviously when you're doing the template all I do is run around with a chalk to get the shape but then you've got to make allowances like I said there's a wall here wall here and a wall here what I've done with this template is I've already taken off half an inch. So I've taken half an inch off this side and I've taken half an inch off that side. Now it seems like a lot, but the way I'm doing this cushion, it's, it's a bordered cushion. So it's gonna have extra padding all the way around the edges. So that's gonna push that out. If you made the template to the exact size of the shape of you know the position that it's going in, because obviously this is in a tight space. There's a wall here, wall here, wall here. So that's got a slot in nicely. Don't wanna make it the exact size of the template then you spend all the time doing the foam, sewing it all up, making it, and then it's too big. What I've done is already taken half an inch off this side and half an inch off that side. So I know that I've got an inch play and then the padding is obviously gonna push out and make it just, so, just snug. So it just, just touches the sides. Because like I say, if you make it the same size as the wood, um, by the time your padding goes on and your fabric goes on, it's going to be too tight and you're going to have to do it again. Most of you are probably wondering why I haven't used this side and pulled this side up straight because the wall is not straight. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a pen and a ruler just to mark on the wood my cut line. Because if I try and cut around this template, I know that the template's gonna move, my line's not gonna be straight. So I'm just drawing the line on for me to follow. Now I'm gonna do the same here. And obviously we've already got the straight edge there. So now we need to just draw this curve. So I'm just being really careful, just dropping the pen off the edge of the template. You want to try and keep this as smooth as possible. It's not as important as when you're cutting. When you're cutting is when you really need to make sure you stay on the line. So there, getting rid of the template. Now you can see the shape. Now what we're going to do is use a jigsaw, cut that out, and then that is our perfect template. Like I say, we've already taken allowance over here and over here. I've done that on the template. So now what I need to do is get my jigsaw, cut that out. This is our bench seat. So it's just like a little, a little seating area that's been built um, and it needs a cushion for it. So I'm doing it on a board because if you do a loose cushion, it's likely to move around. So I like to do them on boards. So this curve, this is the front here. I've marked the top. So that's the top and that's the front. So obviously that there, if you're trying to do a rollover, you're trying to do that all in one, you're gonna have pleats. You're gonna have lots of excess fabric. So this way we're gonna need to make a template and it's gonna to have to be sewn all as one piece and then we're gonna upholster it on. We're using the two and a half inch foam on top and then we're gonna do a nice, a nice clean border that goes all the way round and just sews all the way round. So first things first, I need to take a template of this piece of wood. So I've got a perfect template to follow when I'm cutting my fabric. So I'm gonna do that now. All I need is some glue, some template and fabric. I tend to use bottom in fabric and a bit of chalk and that's essentially it so let's do that so I like to do my templates before I put the foam on because what I'm going to do with this foam is I'm going to hang it over about a quarter of an inch I'll show you how I do that as well and the reason I'm doing that is because obviously it's having an upholstered border so I want it to push out I don't want it to be sort of baggy I want it to be nice and plump so that's the reason I'm going to add a little bit extra foam all the way around to sort of push the border out and give it a bit of a bit of oh. So, all I'm going to do is spray this with some glue and then I'm going to get 
my templating material. Put it on there and just make sure it's sitting nice and flat. You don't want any ripples or bumps. If you get any ripples or bumps, it means you're not gonna get an exact correct template. So now I've got my chalk, I'm just gonna follow that round so I can fill there. There's my ridge, so I'm just gonna follow that round with my chalk. Try not to do too thick a line, because obviously the thicker the line, the harder it's gonna to be to follow. So you wanna do it as thin as possible so you get a nice clean line to follow. So there we have it. There is, that is our template we need. So obviously you can mark front to keep yourself informed, but obviously you're gonna know that. So I'm gonna take this off, take it to the cutting bench and cut half an inch away. So that is my sewing allowance all the way round. So by the time it's sewn up, we're gonna finish on that wood. That's exactly where we wanna finish on the wood. So now we've made our template, we're gonna take that to the cutting table and, and cut that out with the fabric, but we'll do that a bit later. The next stage I'm gonna do is show you how I attach the foam, how I'm gonna cut the foam, and then how I attach the Dacron. So this is a two and a half inch piece of high density luxury blue foam. So it's quite firm. It's exactly what you want for like a bench seat. So it holds its shape nice. It doesn't sag like a soft foam wheel in time. And, and it's a really good quality foam. Depending on where you are in the world, um, all the foams are different colors and different grades. This is my go-to in the UK, but you know, depending on where you are, speak to your local supplier and ask them what the highest density foam they've got. And you want to go for a firm foam, not too firm, not like a chip foam or something rock hard, but this is, this is firm, but it's not, you can see there, I can go down, but like chip foams are really firm. You don't want to use that. So this is what I go to. So this is the bottom of the wood, which is exactly where I want to glue it. So I want to make this easiest for myself as possible. So I want to make as little cutting as possible. So I know here, obviously this bit of the foam is a perfectly straight edge. So I could level that there. See here where I've left about a quarter of an inch. That's what I'm going to do all the way around. The reason I'm doing that is because obviously it's an upholstered cushion. So I want the borders to be nice and full. So I don't want them to be baggy. So that's the reason I'm doing that. So it pushes the border out nicely. That's just me. You don't have to do that, but that's the way I like to do it. Yeah, I've always found that's the best way to finish them. So obviously along this line here, I'm not gonna have to cut, but I am gonna have to cut here because that's not a dead 90 degrees. That's an angle. And obviously this part of the foam as well is all lumpy and bumpy. So we wanna cut that clean as well. So what I'm gonna try to do is just lift this corner so it's just propped up. So we're gonna glue the foam and the wood. Just make sure you cover it all. And I'm just gonna drop that back down. So see there, I've left myself about a quarter of an inch. So now what we need to do is we need to go and get our foam cutting knife to cut this nice and straight. We're gonna get our guide as well, so I'll show you that. And then after that, we're gonna put our Dacron on, so yeah. Right guys, so this is our Bosch GSG 300 heavy duty foam cutting utensil. And this is my guide, so I can use that on the table to get me nice straight cuts without getting a jagged border. 80% of the time it works every time. So I'm just gonna put that on there. So I've done exactly the same there guys. I've allowed about half a, half a, about a, cent, well, a centimeter clearance. I'm gonna do the same all the way around. So hopefully you can see there guys, I've left myself a little allowance all the way round. All we need to do is add Dacron. So the Dacron's gonna go on the top and around the sides, again, to push the border out so we get a nice domed border finish. Now the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put the border on separately guys, because I don't wanna try and roll the Dacron over the sides either. 
because the Dacron is going to do the same as the fabric. It's going to pucker. You're not going to get a clean, clean line. So I'm going to pull that so we clear out all of those ripples. You don't want any loose Dacron on the knee when it's nice and tight. So now we're just going to get our scissors and cut that off and then we're going to put Dacron on the borders as well. So I'm just running my scissors along, along the edge, just cutting away any excess. So now we need to cut our border. So as you can see here, that is a two and a half inch piece of foam. So I'd probably say with that extra centimeter, I'll cut four inch strips and then I can just glue them on all the way around and that's gonna give us a nice border. So the reason I've done it this length, that cron is just a bit longer than the wood. So that's gonna keep the fabric protected from the wood. So that's how we're gonna glue it on. So we're just gonna start gluing that on. What I'm doing here is I'm gluing both pieces of Dacron and then I'm pinching the two together just to give me a nice seam to follow with my selvage. So waiting for the glue to go off slightly and then pinching the two together. You get a lovely line to follow. When you lay your fabric on, you know exactly what line you're following. So we're gonna do that all the way around and then we can start cutting some fabric. Right guys, here we are at the cutting table. So all I'm gonna do now is go around cutting half an inch away from my line. You can always mark it if you want to, but I've been doing this a long time. So again, I'm just cutting half an inch away from my finish. So my chalk line is my finish line. So I'm just cutting half an inch away, all the way around. That is our template cut and ready. So now we need to do is cut our material to exactly that. And then we're gonna need to cut our borders. So we're gonna cut five, six inch borders, probably six inch borders to make sure we've got plenty to pull up underneath. But we want to get this shape. This shape here is really important. This is gonna be the hardest bit about the whole thing is getting that sewn on nice and clean with no ripples. The only parts of this that are seen is here and here. They're the parts that are seen, the rest of it is up against the wall, so they're there and there. So it's only here and on here that it's going to be seen. So that's the most important part. So we're going to get our fabric now, we've got a lovely green veil velvet. We're going to cut that and then we're going to cut my borders and then we can start sewing. Right, so the reason I'm doing it this way around is because this is a velvet and as you can see it's got a pile or in America they like to call it a nap. So we want the nap to go forward or the pile to go forward, so the way I'm going to position this is like so, because that is the very front. So I'm just gonna lay it like this. Now, I don't want this to slide, so as it is a velvet, it is likely to move. So I'm just gonna use a couple of good old weights to hold it in place. And now we can start cutting this out. So guys, I'm literally following this template exactly because I've already done my half inch allowance on the template so I'm just copying the template there we have it that is our top all cut so now we need to do is cut our strips because what I'm going to have to do is have seams. So I'll probably have to have a seam here, seam here, seam here, seam here, and then one seam at the back in the corner here. So I'm just going to cut four whips, start sewing it up, and then start working it out as I'm sewing it. Oh, you're back here now, are you? Good to fucking see you. Right, guys, so all I'm doing is I'm using my ruler, and all I'm going to do is use my chalk and mark out six inch strips. So I'm gonna go six inches and then full width. I'm gonna do about three or four of them. Then I know I've got enough to sew it up. Now all I've got left to do once I finish cutting this third one is to mark the top of the fabric. So I know when I'm sewing it where the top is. So the naps obviously, this is the top. So all I do is mark with my chalk top. I 
do that on all three so they're all going the same way. So now we can start sewing this up. So what I'm going to do is just get my borders and work out how I'm going to attach these. We're going to go from here. We can put a join around here somewhere. It doesn't have to be on the corner. So we're going to do that. So around here, because I know, templated this, I know that this is on show and this side's on show. This side you're not going to see at all and also the back you're not going to see at all. So I'm going to bring that around here so that border is going to fall around here and there'll be a so there's going to be a join here and another bit of fabric comes along here then we're going to sew around here and then we're going to put another join around there when you're doing high quality upholstery you don't want joins in the middle um, on cushions they're okay at the back so you don't see them or on the sides but with a cushion like this where it's on show and you want to do good quality work you don't want joins in the middle anywhere in the middle of a panel that's going to be seen if you do have to put joins on the front they have to be on the corners so this way round i'm going to do a join round here because you're not going to see this, this is up against the wall then that piece is going to run all the way around there and then there'll be a join about here somewhere but again that's not going to be seen so that's not an issue at all right guys so we're at the sewing machine now so i'm just going to zoom you in a bit so this is the front you can see the curve there so i'm going to start around here that's where i know where one of my joins starts so i'm just going to leave that i'm going to leave that quite open so there's a lot to play with there still so i can do my join when i join my fabric back on when i join the other panel back on i've already put a green cotton on the machine let's start sewing this up so again we're straight out to, into a corner so what i've done is i'm lifting my foot I can actually put a little nip in there if I want to, to, to free it up a little bit. So I've got my guide here, so that's giving me my half inch selvage or seam. Now as this is a velvet, you can see what I'm doing. I'm only going to have to, because it's got on a, quite a major curve, I'm just going to be going sort of a couple of inches by a couple of inches. What I'm doing is I'm grabbing both bits of fabric together here and then to behind there and then because it is a velvet, it will slide, meaning the two bits of fabric together will move if you don't hold them firm. So I'm just grabbing both pieces, making sure I follow my half inch seam allowance. So what I'm doing is I'm using both bits of fabric to manipulate so I can try and get them straight on top of each other So now we're coming up to our straight and our corner. So this side also needs to be clean because it's on show. But as you can see there, there's my bit of fabric here. So I can see there that my fabric ends there. So now I'm just gonna slightly twist and try and and slightly put a slight curve on the corner not because the board isn't curved but I just think it looks a bit nicer with a slight curve on it instead of a sharp point well I'm just gonna stop there we're gonna need to join enough a bit of fabric onto here so I'm gonna do that now by cutting off that selvage and getting another bit of fabric so I'm just going to cut that off as well. So cutting that selvage all the way off. So I'm just going to join these two together because this is a, a border join. And at the top as well, when you finish, always do a couple of back stitches just to stop your seam from pulling apart. So now they are joined up. We can carry on now sewing around here. Now we've got that next piece on.
So again, we're coming up to another join soon. So leave yourself plenty to work with. I'm gonna stop there. So there's our second join. So now we can just carry on again. So I've left myself plenty there to be able to do that join. If I came too close, I'd really struggle to get that join done. So this one, this join is your final join. You don't want to cut this short. So I'm just going to lay that on there nice and flat. Pull both bits of fabric. See here, I want to finish about half an inch over the top of the other one. So when they're both folded back together. So now we can join these two up. always cut off your loose threads so now we drop that back onto where we finished we just pull that nice and tight I can just sew straight along there join onto there and that's the cushion sewn up right ladies and gentlemen so now it's time to put this fabric onto the board so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and sort of temp it on meaning I'm going to temporarily put some staples in to put it in place hold it exactly where I want it to be, check that it fits okay, then if everything's fine, then I'll take the temporaries out, put some permanents in. So the first thing you wanna do is get your corners into position. Now this is a really important part of upholstery. Obviously the corners have all got to be in the right place. This is called your selvage. So your selvage is where your two bits of fabric meet, or four bits if you've got piping in there. The way I like to do these, I like to have the selvage going down. So you could do it either way, you could have the selvage going up, like so, so the selvage is up here on the top of the cushion, along here, up on the top, in a strip. But I like to have it going down, I think it is much better look. Let's just cut away some of these threads. I also cut away some of this bulk in the corners, just so it sits a bit nicer and a bit flatter. So the first thing I'm going to do is start getting this set in place. And then I'm going to work my way over to this corner here. See there, we've got a lot of fabric in there. I'm just going to put a couple of little nips in there as well, just to free up that corner. So now I want to get that corner in position. Now, I'm going to keep spinning this round. So again, last two corners. So again, I'm going to cut some of that bulk out of the corners right so this should be quite tight because it was cut to the wood and it looks pretty good so that is all set on now if I zoom out you can see that it's all sort of semi on the first thing I'm gonna do is get this corner in place now this is the back corner also, what I'm doing is getting my getting my hand in and pulling that selvage down all the way around and here as well around this side. So if I pull down here, I can see that my corner is lining up with my corner of the wood, which is here. So I am just going to put a temporary in there. Now that is that corner position on. So I don't know if you guys can see this. That selvage is up at the moment. So what I'm doing is getting my hand in. You can see here my fingers, what I'm doing is pulling that selvage so it's facing down. Now I'm going to do this corner, again making sure my selvage is down. All the way around this cushion is so important, I can't ex express how important that is to have the selvage facing down. 
or the same way regardless so if it's up you want it all up you don't want parts of it down you want it it all has to be the same so again there right so that is all that is all four corners of the cushion on so now we're just going to go around sort of temping the middles down we might put a few more in than just the middles just so we know it sits correctly and it all fits So what I'm doing is I'm shooting, but I'm not going all the way in. I'm going in at an angle, so they're easy to take out. So the head's still sticking up on one side, so it's much easier to take out. So I'm doing the same thing around this side, guys. I'm just checking. I'm literally just going around, temping it all on, making sure it's all going to fit nicely. So again, getting my fingers in, making sure my selvage is all facing down. So when you're working on a curve like this, you've got to try and work your way around because the ripples are all going to sort of, they're all going to gather in here. So, so you just want to kind of work it, like go that way with this one and then this side come this way. But we are just still temping on guys, just to make sure it's all going to fit. Right guys, so now I can see it's all going to fit. We've tempted it on all the way around. We've got our selvage facing the way we want it to. So now all I'm going to do is, I mean, you don't need to do this, but if you want to be hypercritical, you can. So what I'm going to do here is measure from the seam to the wood. And I'm just going to follow that all the way around. So you could just follow that round now. I could literally just from that point, just start pulling it so it all stays nice and level. From this point and this point i'm just going to measure so i know what the other corners need to be so it's about two and three quarter inches so now what i'm going to do is just start state from that corner start working my way along now i'm standing directly in front of this uh, you can either have it the other way around you can have it looking down whatever feels best to you so you can see if that border is going to stay nice and straight Another important thing with, with cushions like this, you don't want to pull left or right, you want to pull straight down. You want to make sure it stays nice and straight because otherwise you're going to end up with more fabric on the other side. So as you can see now, these are all going all the way in. So I can take these temps out. Right, so, so if you look at that from the front on, the reason I'm doing the back first, I'm going to make sure the back is all the way on, then the front where the curve is, I can really pull that tight. As long as the back's in position where it needs to be, I can really give that front a good pull and try and clear out some of the potential bagginess. Now we come to the end. You see our corners here, so they do line up properly. What I do here, I can get my skewer in here, inside the seam, sort of pull out the padding so it fills out that corner. So now we're going to start working on this middle section, or the curve. So we're going to start in the middle and work our way across, and then from the middle up. You could also make some relief cuts into here, see how much tension we've got, because the you know the curve and how tight the fabric is so you could also make some relief cuts but I don't think I'm gonna have to right so now so now we're gonna work from this side out and that's why it's so important when you're sewing, you know, that your fabric doesn't rip all, you hold onto both pieces and you let the machine do the work. You're just holding it tight because it's a velvet. There's a good chance it could ripple up and the velvet could move. So with, when doing curves, you have to be super careful. So now as we come up to this corner, we just want to keep that nice and straight in the same round here so now we can finish the bottom 
So we've got a temporary in the corner holding it in place. So we're gonna take that out. See now, we've got all this fabric we need to get rid of. And we've also got some Dacron as well. So what you can do is pull your Dacron out by hand or you can cut it out. But what you wanna try and do with corners, which is really important, is to clear out the bulk. Because with a bench seat, it needs to sit flat, as flat as possible, because it's going onto a fixed board. So you don't have much maneuverability shall we say so you want it to be nice and flat so what i'm going to do here is go so now what we can do is cut out all of that and see there's still a bit too much dacron i'm going to put another one in here so now we just need to clear all this out and finish this side so you want it to sit as flat as you can get it. That's pretty good. It's just gonna go one, two, and then we can cut off all this excess now. And now we'll do the same thing on the other side. So as you can see, we've done the same on all five corners. You can see here that we've cut out most of the bulk Got these top, got the bottom of this board finished really nicely and clean. Try to get rid of all the excess Dacron. Now we just need to put a bottom on and then we'll go through how we fix this with some Velcro. Um, I'm not going to show you in depth the bottom. We've done it many times on this channel. So we're going to speed through it. Just going to put this bottom on and then we'll talk about how we're going to fix it onto the top right so we've just finished doing the bottom in we're just going to put some velcro on now this is how we attach it to the wood or the seating area that they're going to so i'm just going to put a strip of velcro this is heavy duty sticky back velcro so and it is super super duper strong so once it's on it's not coming off or I've put this on walls and seen the paint come off with it so be careful with it and then we also stick some staples in So I'm gonna do one along the back as well, and then she's done. Right, so that's the Velcro done. I might put a bit more on when we're on site, but for now that's gonna be fine. So that is how you do an upholstered board for a seating area. So guys, I'm just checking where the Velcro is gonna fall on the board, on the frame, shall I say. Now I'm cutting the Velcro to size, um, I use adhesive backed Velcro so it sticks, it's very strong and then I throw some staples in as well to hold it in place and it's never coming up then. Then I'm just dropping the board down on top of the Velcro, giving it a little dress and Robert's your father's brother. So thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.